The Senate now has before it for final consideration Senate Bill number 1205. The Secretary will read the bill. In the Senate, Senate Bill 1205 by State Affairs Committee, an act relating to firearms, to revise provisions regarding the prohibition. Madam President. Senator Lakey. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that further reading of Senate Bill 1205 be dispensed with the general show it's been read at length a third time and properly placed before the Senate for final consideration. You've heard the unanimous consent request. Is there an objection? Hearing none, it is so ordered, and Senator Lakey is recognized to open the debate. Thank you, Madam President. Senators, you know, in Idaho, we feel very strongly about protecting our Second Amendment rights. Uh, in Idaho, sometimes uh, we also partner with the federal government on some things, and we disagree on other things. This bill makes it clear that we do not agree with the direction that our current federal administration is headed on the Second Amendment. Article 1, Section 11 of the Idaho Constitution addresses our right to keep and bear arms. Our Constitution in Idaho protects those rights more strongly and more specifically than the U.S. Constitution. We have a long history, Senators, of protecting our right to keep and bear arms in this legislature. Uh, we've been a leader nationally. In 2014, we enacted the Idaho Federal Firearm Magazine and Register Ban Enforcement Act. That legislation gave Idaho what is commonly referred to as the status of a Second Amendment sanctuary state. That 2014 legislation prohibited a state or local official from ordering another government official, agent, or employee to enforce an executive order, agency order, law, rule, or regulation of the U.S. government upon a personal firearm, a firearm accessory, or ammunition. It also provided for a $1,000 penalty uh, for the first offense, and the second offense was a misdemeanor. I think to say, Senators, that um, President Biden sees the right to keep and bear arms a little bit differently than the Idaho legislature is probably an understatement. President Biden issued an executive order on April 7, 2021 of this year. It proposed various things, including uh, restrictions on certain firearm components and accessories, uh, on the issuance, it also promoted the issuance of federal red flag laws, uh, model red, model Fred, yeah, my tongue's all tied up this morning, model federal red flag laws, uh, and encouragement of the states to adopt those model laws. Senate Bill 1205 is in response to a large degree to that executive order. Senators, this is not a nullification bill. This is a non-support bill. The bill states that federal actions that violate the Idaho Constitution will not be enforced or supported by government entities in Idaho. It builds upon and does not reset or replace the 2014 Act that I referred to previously. So this preserves our status quo, a snapshot in time. I want to go through the bill briefly um, and hit some of the high points. First, we start out with some statements of legislative intent. Uh, we note that the right to keep and bear arms in Idaho is necessary to the safety and security of the state of Idaho and its citizens. Our intent in this legislature in enacting this act is to protect, uh, is to protect and include firearms, firearm accessories, and firearm components in the protections of this act. It also is further the intent of the legislature in enacting this act to prohibit the expenditure of funds, use of personnel and resources by Idaho government entities to assist the federal government to implement any of the exec these executive orders, agency orders, treaties, laws, or rules and regulations enacted after the effective date of this act that violate our Constitution, Section 11, Article 1. It's also our intent to oppose and not support the enactment and implementation of federal red flag laws that also violate our Constitution. And then we include, this is similar to the 2014 Act, uh, the legislature does not intend to affect Idaho law enforcement officers who assist federal agents on drug and gang enforcement activities, uh, which often in involve the uh, criminal activities, including firearms. The prohibitions um, and additions specifically. So, uh, Senators, we're amending 183315B. We take out the state of Idaho and political subdivisions and provide for the term government entity. And then we provide a definition for that term, uh, which is broader than those two previous references. We also add the term treaty uh, to the list of federal orders that um, we're protecting citizens against and, and uh, prohibiting support 
of. We also remove the term personal from the term firearm, just to provide more clarification. We're talking about a firearm. And then we add firearm component uh, to the list of things that are protected. And then we have definitions that did not previously exist for firearm accessory and firearm components. So, Senators, the gist of the protections are contained in uh, subsection 4, the new language. It states that all Idaho government entities are prohibited from using any personnel, funds, or other resources to enforce, administer, or support the enforcement of these federal actions. And then it includes, again, this um, is to protect actions that occur after the effective date of this act, and it includes firearms, firearm components, firearm accessories, and ammunition. So it adds to the 2014 Act, Senators. Not only can they not be ordered to enforce, but they're not going to expend resources, they're not going to loan equipment, um, they're not going to share funds. Um, there's a prohibition on a larger scope of federal uh, support for that federal action. We provide, Senators, that the Attorney General's Office may enforce this act. Uh, we're not unconstitutionally mandating the Attorney General to do anything. We provide them the authority to enforce it. We also allow the legislature to pursue either injunctive relief or declaratory action to make sure that the provisions of this act are complied with. And then if the legislature does take such action and we prevail, we have the right to collect our attorney's fees and costs. We provide for um, civil immunity to protect those officers and officials that decline to enforce these federal orders that are unconstitutional under the Idaho Constitution. And as I mentioned, we provide uh, a definition of firearm accessory. Uh, that comes mostly from Idaho, Idaho Code 183315A, but it's a little broader, so it moves it over from the previous section. We also provide for a definition of firearm component and the definition for Idaho government entity, uh, which is very broad. Then we note in subsection 8 that this builds upon the 2014 timeline or baseline that we established in that act that I referred to previously. So this adds on to that. It doesn't replace or repeal. We provide a severability clause, also an emergency clause, and we make this effective, Senators, back to January. Is it, uh, there's a retroactive clause back to January 20th, 2021, the, um, the initial date that the current federal administration took office. Senators, we work closely with the AG's office on this language. Uh, we have the support of law enforcement, specifically the FOP and the sheriffs, and I would ask for your support. Madam President, debate is open. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Stennett. Thank you, Madam President, to debate the bill. The Senator has the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Senators, this is a blend of the 2014 bill, and as was explained, um, has added a lot of language. Um, the thing that disturbs me um, about current language that this is being added to is um, I find it interesting that there's no definition of red flag laws anywhere in this um, that's explicit, and I've been here for 12 sessions, and um, frankly, some of the things that people have flagged as a red flag law had nothing to do with guns, but somehow if they attach it to it, then somehow it can be attached to the Second Amendment, and then we have somehow better power over it. Um, I think that that um, lays the uh, dangerous groundwork for the rest of what I am going to explain about this bill. I mean, um, the, uh, the difficulty with uh, existing um, language about the Idaho legislature intending to create the power to enforce this act through the Attorney General or the Idaho legislature means that it goes um, right uh, over, it allows the legislature to uh, somehow be um, able to criminalize um, without going through a judiciary process. Um, same thing's true on the first violation for civil penalty, not to exceed $1,000, be paid directly into the general fund, again, and not running it through the judiciary. Um, that a law enforcement would be responsible to report or be criminalized by the legislature, the attorney general, when wages, benefits, and responsibilities are employed by cities and counties who have no say in what their law enforcement can do if there's a conflict. Um, I think what's disturbing about what's being added into this bill are treaties. Um, treaties like tribes have sovereignty like states and therefore states cannot overturn their rights, but is explicitly added into this bill. 
There's a portion on page three, um, on lines three through um, five, that talks about the provisions of this section may be enforced by the Idaho Attorney General and that the legislature of the state of Idaho may bring legal action for declaratory or injunctive relief to ensure compliance. But there's no cap on that. Is this unlimited civil action? Can the legislature, any time it's unhappy with something, any law enforcement around the state decides to do something that um, they disagree with? Are we going to use uh, taxpayer money to be in civil action and um, cost uh, of going to court without the judiciary being um, even asked to participate? Um, there's portions of this um, that talk about uh, when the good senator from 12 mentioned that um, the, has the uh, approval of law enforcement, the only um, definitive approval was received by the fraternity order of police um, who, upon asking if there was a conflict, we do a lot of collaborative work together between our federal law enforcement and our local law enforcement and state officials. We do not have the expertise to do some of the things that criminal actions happen um, because we don't have the training at the state level. And so um, if we don't agree, do we lose that ability to have that collaborative work? And if we disagree with what the federal government is doing, what are we going to do with all the type of grants that we get in order to train our troopers and our law enforcement, or grants that uh, come through all levels of government, like coming through our parks and recreation rangers for safety enforcement, or budgets to our Idaho State Police, or federal grants for our fish and game wardens, or any number of things that don't seem to be explained very well in this bill. It's interesting that um, the only ones that did actually approve this and did mention that they would have to go case by case about how they would manage a conflict like this um, if the federal gov government was at odds with the state government. There was no approval by the Association of Sheriffs, so there's nothing in here from the chiefs of police. The um, U.S. Attorney's Office was not asked. The Idaho courts were not asked. And so I am uh, very concerned about what would happen if we ended up going up against uh, preemptive laws or sovereignty about how we'd be actually able to manage this without a lengthy, expensive um, duration in our court system at the taxpayer expense. Thank you, Madam President. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Burgoyne. Thank you, Madam President. You know, um, in my view, this is complicated. And I have spent my career in the law thinking the law was too complicated. It should be more simple. It should be easier to understand. Um, there's a reason why it's particularly important in this area that it be reasonably easy to understand at least by a law enforcement officer, and that's because this legislation attaches itself to prior legislation that we passed in 2014. And um, in that legislation, we said that an Idaho law enforcement officer cooperating with federal law enforcement officers inappropriately would face a $1,000 civil penalty for a first offense and a misdemeanor for a second, third, or additional offense. And the, the problem we face, I think, is we really don't know the full extent of Second Amendment rights under the federal Constitution, and that's why we've had more Supreme Court activity on that issue over the last couple of decades. And just the other day, the Supreme Court declined to hear two cases that uh, gun rights advocates wanted the court to hear. And it leaves us all kind of wondering what the scope of the Second Amendment is. At the state level, we have a similar problem. We know that the Second Amendment doesn't grant any absolute or uncontrolled rights with respect to guns, that there are areas in which Congress can legislate. And with the Idaho Constitution and uh, its provision in Article 1, Section 11, uh, it says the people have the right to keep and bear arms, which right shall not be abridged. 
And then there's a but. But this provision shall not prevent the passage of laws to govern the carrying of weapons concealed on the person, nor prevent passage of legislation providing minimum sentences for crimes committed while in possession of a firearm, nor prevent the passage of legislation providing penalties for the possession of firearms by a convicted felon, nor prevent the passage of any legislation punishing the use of a firearm. Uh, skipping a little bit. Nor shall any law permit the confiscation of firearms except those actually used in the commission of a felony. A lot of exceptions and an exception to the exceptions. So this, this provision is open to some interpretation about what its boundaries are, as is the Second Amendment. And so when we try to say that an Idaho law enforcement officer should not cooperate with, uh, or an Idaho law enforcement agency should not cooperate with a federal agency where the federal executive order, law, or regulation violates the Idaho Constitution, how's a law enforcement officer supposed to know until our Supreme Court rules on what our Constitution allows and does not allow? And it's not an academic question, although I uh, concede that we now know uh, that there has been uh, no court action under the 2014 law. But if we want to really know what the boundaries of these two of federal, the federal constitution and the state constitution provisions are, that's just going to take court cases. And if a law enforcement officer gets it wrong, they're in jeopardy. And so for me, I have to come back on this legislation to where I was in 2014. because I think that's not a good place to put our law enforcement personnel. The other thing I wonder about is if a law enforcement officer gets a directive from a supervisor to do something in the way of cooperation and doesn't feel he or she should do that under this legislation, where does that leave the law enforcement officer? Now, this legislation says that it can be enforced by the Attorney General, and the Attorney General can seek a declaratory judgment. And while not strictly speaking uh, an advisory opinion, a declaratory judgment is where you kind of come up with a situation, hypothetical or real, and you go to court and you ask a court to declare whether or not in this scenario, our constitutional provision on guns does or does not permit it. The fiscal note says there is no cost. If this legislation is going to have effect, if it's going to be more than just a dead letter in our statute book, there will be cost and there will be litigation cost so that we start down the road of figuring out what the scope of our amendment, or not of our amendment, but our provision in Article 1, Section 11 of the Idaho Constitution is, and what its parameters are. So we're not sure what the parameters of our Constitution are, nor the Second Amendment, and to me at least, it's not clear that the Biden administration's actions thus far violate either the Second Amendment or Article 1, Section 11 of the Idaho Constitution. I think one final concern that I have is that the language of the bill, in my estimation, just the language of the bill, especially the intent section, creates a sense that constitutional gun rights are under immediate threat by the new federal administration. And that's not at all clear in my estimation. Now, I understand that there are people in the United States of America and many people in Idaho who disagree with the actions that have been taken thus far and the actions that have been talked about by the new federal administration. I completely understand that. But it is not clear that any of those statements or actions actually would be held to violate our Constitution. 
Finally, I think there's one thing about that that I'd like to explain, and that is I think of a — when I think of a state constitution and a federal constitution and potentially conflicting provisions, I think of it like a donut. If the Second Amendment is this big around, and if the — if Article I, Section 11 of the Idaho Constitution is this big around, so there are more rights with respect to guns in our Constitution than in the Second Amendment, a proposition that may or may not be correct, but let's accept it as true for today. It doesn't follow that the Idaho Constitution might not have — or the Supreme Court of Idaho's interpretation of the Idaho Constitution might not run afoul of some supreme law of the land. And a supreme law of the land could be a con federal constitutional provision, but it could also be a treaty. And treaties are specifically talked about in this legislation. And treaties are supreme law of the land. They're ratified by Congress. And so, for example, if we had a domestic — or, excuse me, if we had an international terrorism situation that led the United States to enter into a treaty with, say, Mexico and Canada and, you know, uh, other countries, and and that is the supreme law of the land, and we could have those treaties inconsistent with our own constitutional provision. And our constitutional provision would have to yield to the treaty in those circumstances. So I think this is an extremely complicated situation in an area where it's not, to me, clear that we actually have a conflict or are going to have a conflict but it does kind of kind of rub the scab, if you will, or rub the wound. And it kind of says to people, your gun rights are under threat, when maybe they are and maybe they aren't. And I, I think that it's probably not the best policy to be suggesting to people that their gun rights in Idaho are under threat, if unless there is a clear and definable threat to their gun rights. We are very, very accommodating of gun rights in Idaho, and that's Idaho, and that's the nature of this state, and I don't see that changing, notwithstanding actions at the federal level. Gun ownership, the ability to manufacture ammunition and firearms, at least from what I've heard so far, I do not think that that threat is at the level that others may think it is. And for those reasons, Madam President, I'll be voting now. Thank you. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Rice. <clears throat> Just a couple of quick comments. One of the oldest recognized authorities of the states is that we don't have to allow our officials to be co-opted by the federal government period. That's what this bill does. And it sets the boundaries of what they cannot be co-opted for. And it instructs our officials and employees of the state and its subdivisions that they are not to engage in that kind of conduct. And our clause on our right to keep and bear arms in our state constitution is exceptionally clear. And so this is good legislation. It works well. It works the way it should. And I appreciate the hard work of those who have worked on this matter. Thank you. Is there further debate? Senator Zito. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to debate the bill. Um, I'd like to begin with pointing out that as far as Supreme Court and whether or not our law enforcement can, local law enforcement, state law enforcement, can enforce federal law or not, their first responsibility is to obey their oath of office. And the Prince versus the United States Supreme Court decision verifies and validates that their first job is to uphold their oath of office and that they are under no obligation to support the enforcement of federal law. And so I'm really proud of the fact that this bill 
helps to validate that and give our law enforcement agents and law enforcement officials the confidence to be able to do that. You know, many times when we're working to do the right thing, I find for myself while serving in the legislature, I find myself feeling like and sometimes thinking about the Spartan Army, the 300, during the Battle of Thermopylae. But like the 300, I gain strength from the support of the citizens outside of this building when I remember who I represent and what is at stake, and this bill protects and preserves their rights. We realize that we're at a precipice of losing everything that we hold dear, the values that made this the land of freedom, unlike any land in the history of this world. Like the Spartans, it falls upon us to defend what is ours, and this bill does exactly that on many levels. This state draws the line in the sand that the legislature of the state of Idaho will watch out for the citizens. We know there is treachery. We know it's difficult to know who to trust and where to turn. We know that the massive force of an overgrown federal government is the driving force of an executive branch that is anti-gun and have said that they will come after our Second Amendment with a vengeance that would never have been thought of in this great land. This bill protects the citizens of the state of Idaho from that. Disarming the people is the first step to a total takeover and complete loss of freedom. We are seeing encroachments from many directions on our privacy, our freedom of expression, our freedom to communicate. This bill is the beginning of protection for the citizens of the state of Idaho. We find ourselves being divided by race, gender, economic status, and more. When all we want is just to raise our families, worship, pursue our happiness, and live our lives in peace. Today I stand with a humble heart, filled with gratitude for the actions of good people of this state, whose wisdom, fortitude, and strength to see the direct threat to our Second Amendment as only the continuation of an acceleration of the loss of our freedom, leaving us defenseless, leaving us with no way to protect our families from the threat of tyranny, to defend our homes or our way of life. The citizens of this state did not give up. They did not take no for an answer. They did not concede to maybe next year. They persisted, contacting their representatives and making sure that the will of the people were done. I cannot find the words to express my gratitude to the numerous members across the rotunda and those in this body who supported this legislation from the beginning months ago. They have the depths of my admiration. To quote Samuel Adams, if ever a time should come when vain and aspiring men shall possess the highest seats in government, our country will stand in need of its experienced patriots to prevent its ruin. To stand with you all is one of the finest moments of my life. I look at the words above the chair of the President of the Senate, in God we trust. Never forget these words. It is from him we gain our strength. He carries us in times of trial. He holds us in his hand and brings us home safely at the end of this earthly journey. This senator stands in support of the work of this body and of the citizens of this state. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Wintrow. Thank you, Madam President and Senators. I just want to briefly say um, I don't know that all constituents in the state share the same um, attitudes about this bill and um, I would be remiss if I didn't represent the majority of the constituents that I represent and indicate that this is not a concern of theirs. Um, the Second Amendment is protected quite well in our state um, and I, I, like I said I, I don't think that's under siege or anything like that. My concern is many but the one thing that I do find um, a question mark about is if we do prohibit law enforcement from engaging with collaborative processes with federal agents, um, they're working with us with immigration and terrorism. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, would that be crippled or would people have to make a choice or would they get in trouble? And then would they, you know, harm come to them as well? So I think it's, um, it's a little bit of a confusing bill to me, but uh, thank you for your indulgence. I just needed to share the concerns from my constituents. Thank you. Is there further debate? 
Hearing none, Senator Lakey is recognized to close the debate. Thank you, Madam President. Um, senators, I do want to thank all the senators that provided debate on this from 26, 16, 10, 23, and 19, uh, those that agree and those that disagree. Um, appreciate all of their comments and recognize we have different perspectives. Uh, senators, just a couple of comments uh, in response to some of the points that were made. I agree that um, the term red flag law is open to interpretation. I haven't always agreed uh, with what some define as a red flag law. Um, the Biden administration specifically used that term in their uh, most recent executive order, uh, thus the reference in, in our intent section. Uh, so folks may view that differently, but the backstop that we have in this case is our Idaho Constitution. The bill comes forward uh, that may or may not be a red flag law, depending on somebody's definition. If it if you compare the language of that red flag law or whatever the law may be to our Constitution, that's, that's the litmus test. Call it what you want, uh, but our Constitution is the backstop. Our Constitution is that, lit that litmus test. And it's specifically, this language specifically um, recognizes our Idaho Constitution, which states, as was referenced, I think, from the Senator from 16, our Constitution specifically prohibits confiscation of firearms except those actually used in the commission of a felony. And then it also provides our ability to enact firearms laws. We maintain that authority. Um, we feel like we're the best body to make those decisions. That's what this bill is really about. Um, it's also, again, focused on new executive orders that violate our, our Idaho Constitution not on other areas of cooperation with, between law enforcement and the federal government. Um, it doesn't apply to previous orders. I will state for the record, Senators, that I received confirmation from Murphy Olmstead from the Idaho Sheriff's Association that they have unanimous support for this bill. Uh, granted, I recognize we've been on a little bit of a short time window, and they're working on a letter of support. I'm happy to email that out when I get it, um, but um, that's the communication that I've had with them. Senators, we, um, I think, again, may disagree on the intent or the likelihood of the federal government infringing on our Second Amendment rights. I can only judge my perspective based on what I've heard in both, and seen both in the executive order, um, campaign speeches, those kinds of things. I do feel that our Idaho rights to keep and bear arms are in peril um, under this new administration. As far as the fiscal note, again, Senators, this preserves a snapshot in time. So existing language, existing grants, existing um, cooperation prior to the effective date of this are not affected. Um, if the Biden administration changes the rules, then that may have a fiscal impact. If the Biden administration enacts new grant opportunities, which is possible, the federal government, as was noted, can't force us to do anything. What they do is offer carrots. Um, here's funds. If you want these funds, uh, you'll do these things. Um, so there may be a possibility that we may lose the opportunity for federal grants in the future. But both of those things are speculative. Senators, I want to just conclude with um, my statement that we cherish and strongly protect our right to keep and bear arms in Idaho. And when it comes to gun rights, this establishes that Idaho personnel, resources, and funds will not be used to enforce new federal actions that violate our Idaho Constitution. This bill protects our citizens by taking practical action not nullification, but practical action that they will not receive our support or the support from Idaho government entities. With that, Madam President, debate is closed. Debate being closed, the question is, shall Senate Bill Number 1205 pass the Senate? The Secretary will call the roll. Eigenbrod? Aye. Anthon? Aye. Bear? Aye. Bayer? Aye. Burgoyne? No. Burtonshaw? Aye. Cook? Aye. Crabtree? Aye. Tin Hartog? Crow, Guthrie, Harris, Hyder, Johnson, Lakey, Lee, Lent, Lodge, 
Martin? Aye. Nelson? Nye? Aye. Nye? Patrick? Aye. Robbie? Aye. Rice? Aye. Ricks? Aye. Riggs? Aye. Sousa? Aye. Stanett? Thane? Vic? Ward Eagle King? Aye. Winder? Aye. Wintrow? Aye. Woodward? Cedo? Roll call shows 28 ayes, 7 nays, 0 absent and excused, a majority having voted in the affirmative. Senate Bill number 1205 has passed the Senate.